Hi, everybody. I'm Claire Marshall. Marshall. Remember us? In just one week, 3,000 of you tuned in to watch Courtney and Blair make it big. That's the show, girls. Da, 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 da. Hi, everybody. It's Courtney and Blair again. We're the show girls, as you may have known. It's crazy how in just one week, we've had over 3,000 people view our channel. We never anticipated this sort of reaction, but would like to thank you. You see, our real names aren't actually Blair and Courtney. In fact, I'm Denise Miljanic, and... And my name's Jessica Plume. We're second year new media students studying in Toronto, and we've been conducting a social experiment for the last few weeks. So we'd like to thank you guys for your feedback. Our assignment was to study online identities and interaction on the web through a fake alias. The purpose of our experiment is to document how a person, real or fake, can live online. So here's what we found in the study of Courtney and Blair. In order to make Courtney and Blair look real, we used five online networks using their names to try and see if their fake characters could actually live in an online network society. The first step was Facebook. Everybody has Facebook. So naturally, so did Courtney and Blair. Facebook was simply a way for the girls to connect with people they know, making them more believable and also posting their social life. Interestingly enough, most people that we added accepted us even if they didn't know us. And those that did recognize their faces were more skeptical. Since Courtney and Blair's characters are aspiring actresses in Toronto, we posted ads on Kijiji to make their names more known in the internet and possibly land them on audition to start their careers. Unfortunately, the only response we got back were inappropriate and were either requesting companionship or X-rated photo shoots. Tumblr was a joint account where Blair and Courtney posted their interests and wrote about things that were going on in their lives. The showgirls didn't get much of a response from other Tumblers, but posted on a regular basis. Twitter is rated second in the world of social networking and is public to everyone. So it was important that Blair and Courtney participate and gain as many followers as possible. The theory was that the more followers, the more attention, the more known our characters become, and the more accurately we could document their lives over the internet. We were successful in getting people to tweet us and follow us and even retweet our posts. Our biggest claim to success in this project was by far our YouTube channel. Our intention was to create a daily vlog of our lives as we struggled to get auditions, photo shoots, and roles in our field. However, our first video quickly got noticed and received over 300 views in a matter of hours. The comments posted were so mean and discouraging that we had to take the video down while we struggled to cope with the cyber attacks of YouTube users and diverge a new tactic for the project. While the comments poured in, it seemed that only a handful of people had nice things to say about the girls. Even when a disclaimer was released and the bullies were asked to stop, nothing seemed to faze the dozens of YouTube critics hating on our characters. We were quickly reminded of the way people like Rebecca Black were treated and realized what the internet allows people to get away with. Because of the nature of the internet and the choices users have on privacy settings, it becomes a place where users aren't afraid to voice their opinions and can attack people and bully without many consequences. But what is enough enough? Tonight a tragic situation. A Perkins boy, just 11 years old, believed to have been desperate enough to take his own life. Less than a decade old, social networking sites like YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, MySpace, Flickr, and Skype have over 2 billion users. That's over 30% of the world's population. In fact, if Facebook were a country, it would be the third largest. It's clear that the internet is a part of our everyday life. Some people even say they couldn't live without it. But are we the same people online as we are in the real world? It's obvious that we follow different rule sets on the internet than we do in the outside world. It's likely that you'll find out more about a person on their Facebook in less than five minutes than you will during the first two dates. But it goes past that. The question remains, can we really live online? Our answer is, do we really want to?